Talk Radio 790 KABC does news, weather, traffic, and money every few minutes, every hour. I'm Mark Austin Thomas. Now, the Peter Tilden Morning Show on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Talk Radio 790 KABC, the Peter Tilden Morning Show. It is around 7.06. I'm outside in the parking lot with Risk, who has a career. 27 years you've been a graffiti artist, correct? And there's an, uh, the story now that's breaking is that the L.A. City prosecutors are seeking an injunction against the Metro Transit assassins. They're a tagging crew. And tagging is huge in L.A. Um, you got the river down there where they got this big graffiti art or tag that's so huge they did it from a helicopter. They had to scope out the site with a helicopter, and I don't know how they got the money to hire a helicopter. That already is worrisome to me. But the injunction, and by the way, this is the first of its kind, is going to create like an anti-gang injunction, but it's going to have, there with anti-gangs at safety zones, these guys aren't going to be able to congregate with each other. They're not going to be able to go out and buy the materials. they got a curfew of when they have to be in because it costs the city, like just the thing down by the L.A. River, the giant art piece, their installation, because they're worried about seepage into the water system there, costs millions of dollars to clean up. So they're going after these guys for hundreds of thousands of dollars, as a matter of fact, a, a mil, a, over a million dollars in total to clean this thing up. And I wanted to get your take because you're a graffiti artist and not a tagger, but you started out as a tagger, correct? Correct. And so what you did was illegal for years. How do you justify that, and how many times did you get arrested doing this? Well, I don't know that I can justify it. Um, you know, I did what I did. I was young. Uh, I, you know, I, I paid my debt to society in various ways. Um, my big concern with the whole injunction is, is who's who's regulating it, who's policing it, and who's to say uh, that these are taggers and graffiti artists and vice versa. Because uh, I'm not saying that these guys are not uh, taggers or they're artists or anything like that. I'm just saying that there's a clear difference between graffiti art and tagging, and I want to make sure that the public knows the difference and doesn't um, put everyone together in one group of people, like uh, everybody that uses a spray can is a vandal per se, and that's not true. Except that, let me, from my perspective, um, I don't care if you're good at it or bad at it, if you're a bad artist or good at it. Could I walk into an art museum and I see stuff that sucks and it sells for millions of dollars and I see stuff that is great that doesn't sell for as much, so it's the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. What I say is if you want to tag something or graffiti art something, do the side of your own house. Don't do the side of property that has to be spent millions of dollars to clean it up or that you choose that I have to see. You know what I'm saying? So how does somebody today... I should say, 27 years later, you're selling your stuff for a lot of money to rock stars, to a lot of important people who love your stuff, and you grew out of this and became an artist, okay? But these taggers slash artists, how can you even differentiate when they're doing it on public property? They're not doing it on their property, whether it's artistic or not. They're defacing property. Well, you have to differ differentiate from that, the work, you know? If someone scribbles their name on a property, I'm not saying that's art. I'm saying that's vandalism. Um, and, you know, people clearly know... Uh, what they're doing and you know if you if you do the crime be prepared to do the time it's so wait a minute you're saying if it's artistic and it's not just scrawling a name and it's on somebody else's property it's okay no I, you know the law is a law and if you break the law you, you have to be subject to the penalties I'm not saying that at all I'm just saying that just because someone uses spray paint don't call them a tagger okay but still arrest them they're an artist or a tagger but you still arrest them because they did it illegally sure okay so you're not against rounding these guys up taking them in and keeping them from defacing property. It's not that I'm against it. I, I understand the law. I'm not here to, to uh, ask for amnesty or leniency on anyone that, that breaks the law. Uh, I'm just clearly here to say that graffiti art is not the same as tagging, is not the same as gang writing, is not the same as you know other things. How many good, by the way, I'm talking to Risk, who's been doing this for 27 years. He's done stuff in movies. As a matter of fact, he's doing a car in our parking lot right now uh, which I got to say is magnificent. It's very cool. And you're going to do the other side. We'll do a time lapse and show it on our site. How much do you sell your stuff for? Uh, my canvases are currently going for you know upwards of fifteen thousand plus. Um, smaller pieces for four thousand. All right. I want you to do my car and me for that kind of money. And who's buying your stuff? Uh, a variety of people, collectors, um, different cel celebrities, personalities. Um. Do you guys mentor? I mean, here we are. We've got a culture out here where frustrated ar slash artists, some taggers, non-talented talent, go out there and deface property. Do you have some guys who you can get together to say, we'll mentor these kids and we'll give them canvases and we'll show them how to do this so they don't have to do it? Is there an outlet for this right now or no? And there'll never be an outlet. 
There is. There's a a group called Black Book Sessions uh, 8 coming up July 8th in um, San Bernardino County. And, and what we do is we, we talk to kids and we help them with their art. Um, I personally don't preach to people uh, what they should write on, what they shouldn't write on. They have to be responsible for their own actions. But I do encourage, um, you know, learning more about art and, and the evolution of art. What was the moment in time where you went from being a tagger slash artist to all of a sudden you could charge for your work? Who's the first person who bought something yours who said, I want to buy this? and you, Or you decided, you know what, I think I can sell this stuff. Well, in the 90s, in the early 90s, I went to England to compete in a world competition, a world graffiti competition. My partner Slick and myself, and we won uh, that competition. And all of a sudden, collectors were knocking on our door asking for this stuff on canvas. And, um, you know, making money at it seemed pretty cool. And what, are you design clothing now? And what else? What other stuff do you have? I had a clothing company called Third Rail. I sold it four years ago, and um, now I'm primarily just an artist. You sold it for, like, retirement money? Uh, I'm retired. Man, show me how to use a spray can, will you? So, and, but can anybody learn this or no? You really have to. It takes hours and hours and hours to figure this out. It's like any other art form. You know, it's a, you got to put in your, your dues. you got to spend a lot of time and, and perfect it. All right, this is the home. Is it East Coast, West Coast thing, or is this the home? I was going to say it's the home of graffiti art. Is that true? It's the capital of graffiti art right now. Nobody in New York, Boston, Chicago, L.A., nobody's giving us a run for the money? No, New York, you know, they were the originators of this type of artwork, and that was the mecca for years, but we're right now currently um, leading the poll. All right, check it out. You can go to kbc.com, and we'll show you this car that he painted. Boy, I hope we got the okay on this vehicle. Um, and you're going to do the other side, a logo for the show. Uh, we're going to talk to Carmen Trutanis, the city attorney, next week about this injunction because it's very, very interesting about... Um, people's right to congregate or not, and to your point, how are they going to determine who these people are and put a curfew on them? And it's roving. It's not like the gang injunctions where there's a zone. This can limit their activity uh, all around the city and wherever they live, and also some named and unnamed taggers so that it leaves this uh, injunction open to add names to the the thing. Any last thing you want to say, by the way? Um, No, I want to get back to this, and then uh, we'll pick it up after that. You're a pretty mellow guy. So you're retired. You retired in, like, your 30s? Uh, yes. All right. There you go. Crime sometimes does pay if you start out. That. And it was completely illegal to begin with, correct? It was illegal to begin with. Sorry? Uh, sure. I am. Oh, you know what those kind of wake up. What is reality? Obviously, no one can say because it isn't words. It isn't material, that's just an idea.